Woolline and Jeff, we were talking about the fact that um, the uh, Hohokam who inhabited what is today Phoenix and the entire valley and really all up, up to the edge of what is the Navajo Nation today and as far south as Tucson um, the uh, Hohokam language uh, is a dialect of Uto Aztec which means um, apparently that they must have migrated from the south to this area bringing with them of course their religion and the religion includes human sacrifice and I had asked the question have you discovered any evidence at all on South Mountain that would indicate they practice human sacrifice yeah I, I believe that they have I, I have found at least two two altars up there that describes describes it perfect. If you look on, uh, on my film, Phoenix Lights and Lost City of Cibola, uh, I show a, an altar type setting there where it looks like the rock has been chiseled out to perform sacrifice. And it's very interesting because it's, it's along a dried up um, stream, a uh, water stream there. And when we study this, we, we find out that they would purify themselves first with water before they would, you know, perform the sacrifice. So this altar, not only is it facing towards the eastern sky on where these things mostly come and go from, because on South Mountain here we find more rock art on the east the side than we do the west, and that's basically where I was seeing these things at, is on the east side there. <clears throat> and uh, not only is it faced towards that general area and the streamline bed, but the uh, what looks like dried blood uh, dripping from the stone there. So there's a lot of evidence to suggest that there was more going on to what the archaeologist has led us to believe that these whole calm people were just a simple peace-loving people making pots. And I think the story in this goes a lot deeper than that. Now, when you say dried blood on on the stone, you're you're not actually talking about dried blood, but you're talking about stains on the stone yeah, that yeah. look like blood. That's correct. Yes, yeah, right. Yeah, and because after hundreds of years, the actual dried blood would be gone, but right. the stain on the stones uh, could stay. Uh, oh yeah, you, you mm -hmm. can see that on the Mayan pyramids there. You know, as they toss the bodies down the stairs, and, and all the stains. You know, some of the pictures uh, that we see from Mexico, they only depict, like, one side of the pyramid. But when you go on the other side of the pyramid, it's like a bloody mess there. So, <clears throat> Yeah, that doesn't, uh, that wouldn't make a very good um, picture to put on a, a uh, travel <laughs> poster, so. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, Jeff, um, we've taken a look at all of this. Uh, from a whole different perspective tonight than we ever have before. We've looked at these people, and I think that, uh, I mean, look, America's ancient history is as rich and is as mysterious as anything we've ever heard from Egypt or from Sumeria or any of those other ancient civilizations. We just never hear about it here. We just never, no one ever really delves into this and really talks about it. When you've got people that can build buildings like what we have just looked at tonight and what we've talked about, you're not dealing with dummies here. You're dealing with people that are technologically, archi uh, architecturally advanced, especially for the times in which they lived. And um, how many things, think of this, folks, how many things were built this year that are still going to be standing 500 years from now? Not too many. And yet some of these buildings that we looked at tonight were built and abandoned more than 500 years ago and they're multi-storied buildings 
And, uh, I mean, we looked at one that's at least four stories tall. Uh, two of them, actually, that are at least four stories tall. Uh, still standing. And the people just disappeared. Jeff, we've only got a few minutes left. How do you think, why do you think these people disappeared? Well, um, not only uh, in, in talking with some of the some of the tribes people here, it's very hard to get, you know, a, a, a true Native American, at least here in the city of Phoenix, to actually talk about these things because of because of their past, because of what has happened to their past, and and, and some of them goes to say that uh, the story says that these things got upset, you know, for some un unforetold reason, the sacrificing had stopped, and the spirits would got uh, uneasy. They got upset, and they say that a devil came from the east and took these people away. And that kind of coincides with what the rock art depicts up here is these creatures picking people up by their heads. And not only that, but they're actually interacting with these uh, creatures. They would um, have acrobats, like perform acrobats in the sky. They would hang from barbells and fly with these creatures. Where, would they, where they took them, heavens only knows. But this is what the rock art depicts. So if we are supposed to take this literally, that these things took people away, then that would explain on why we can't find where they went and the reason why they left all their belongings. Because when me and you move, we take our stuff with us, but yet these people, they didn't. They left all their belongings here and just simply disappeared. So that would suggest, you know, something something catastrophic might have happened for these people, you know, just to disappear like this. All right. We've hit the end of the show. All right, folks. That's a wrap for this evening. That's a wrap for this week, and I hope you've enjoyed it. My friends call me Steel Eye. My enemies do, too. You can call me whatever you want to call me. Just keep coming back again and again and again. Until next time, so long, everybody. Thank you.